10 questions. The first one, that in place question. Yeah, so this one, uh, we have array more than two elements. If it is unordered, then there must be at least two elements in the array that, is, that are not in place. Two. Yeah. Two. Yeah. Yeah, the reason is uh, very simple. Uh, so you can see a, a little related to our homework questions, yeah, but slightly different. Yeah. So here we can use K to denote the number of the number of elements not in place. Okay, all right. So let's consider the values. At least, at least two, that means k should be greater or equal to two. So we should first, in order to make sure it's correct, first we want to see if it's possible to be zero. Impossible. Yeah. It's impossible. The reason is unordered. If, it's, if it can be zero, then it becomes ordered. So this unordered condition tells us it cannot be zero. Okay, all right. Let's look at a one. Yeah. One also impossible. Why? Yeah. Because if you only have one element not in place, the remaining n minus one elements in place force the last one in place. So you cannot have exactly one element not in place, yeah. So that means n minus one elements in place would force, so this fact the force forces the last element in place. This property, okay? Yeah. Then after that must be greater than two. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's the explanation. Yeah. All right. Second question. Given an array with n elements for n greater than two, is it possible that one can design an algorithm so that this algorithm can find a minimum, yeah? We're familiar with this question. With m minus two, m minus two comparisons, impossible, right? Yeah, no, impossible, yeah. The reason very simple, because the optimal solution, we show the optimality, because the optimal solution no, sorry, the optimal solution takes m minus one comparisons. You cannot do better than the optimal solution, right? Optimal solution already the, the best one. Nobody can do better than the optimal solution. Yeah. So that's simple. All right. Next question. Monomial. We can apply repeat squaring method and repeat cubing method. We say that repeat squaring method can never do worse than repeat cubing. False. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We know sometimes repeat squaring better. Sometimes we repeat a cubing better. Okay? Yeah. 
So here, let's consider a few cases. Now, if n, n is power of 2, n is power of 2, the repeated squaring is better. Better. All right? N is power of 3. Repeated cubing is better. Ooh. Freezed. Ah, oh, that's scary. Yeah, it happens sometimes. When I write, you know, the PowerPoint freezes. And I can, I cannot even do anything here. So the only thing is, I, I have to kill the program and restart. Then my annotation is gone. Okay? My annotation is gone. Yeah. The software problem. Yeah, it happens sometimes. All right. I need to. Oh, sorry. Oh. Yeah. Five point. All right. Then screen sharing. All right. All right. Well, see my screen. But my PPT, I need to re restart my PPT. You can see annotation is gone. Yeah. You can only look at the video. Okay video for the annotation. So this part, let's restart. Yeah. So you can see software some sometimes not reliable. Yeah. A lot of things can happen. Yeah. Every semester this happened a few times. Every semester. All right. Uh, yeah, I want to talk about. Now let's just finish my explanation. First, n equals power of two. Then, in this case, the repeated squaring is faster, better, better. For this case. Repeated cubing is better. But for other cases, other cases, we don't know which one is better. Okay? Sometimes, sometimes, yeah, yeah. So here, uh, you know, three cases are possible. Okay, yeah. Three cases, yeah, let me use repeated squaring, R S uh, R S number less than R C number. Okay? Yeah. So that means better. Uh, repeated squaring number less than repeated cubing number. And it could be equal. Oh, Sometimes they are equal, and sometimes worse. All, all could happen. Okay, yeah. For this question, yeah. Yeah. all right. Then, this case. Limit ratio to growth function always false. Oh, yeah, I need to. So we can. That's false, right? Yeah. yeah. 
can never do worse. Yeah, that's wrong. It, it could do worse. Yeah. Rabbi Das rule, the reason, because we need to check the condition. Check. Check this condition. Indeterminate form. If the ratio takes this indeterminate form. Okay. If it is this indeterminate form, then we can apply Lapidus rule. Otherwise, we cannot. Yeah. So that's simple. Okay. Number five, if exponential growth function greater than one, so a to the n with a greater than one always has higher order of growth than that of polynomial function two. We prove that, that result. Yeah. If you apply L'Hopital's rule, so we proved that result in class. Yeah. Yeah. Number six, is it possible for us to study unknown algorithms? Remember, in class, we spend a lot of time about the topic, optimality topic of algorithm. Melody. When we talk about this topic, then we explain this argument, okay, and conclude that no algorithm can do better than the current algorithm. Answer is yes, it's possible. Why? The reason, because we can discover some common property. If we can discover certain common properties to cover all, all those algorithms, all such algorithms, including unknown algorithms, then we can study. Okay? So by discovering the common properties In our finding the minimum, that problem, we found some common properties. We find some, you know, a sequence of statements that are true for all those algorithms, including unknown. In our argument, convincing arguments. Yeah. And then later, we will use this method another time. Yeah, later, when I talk about another important, when we do the sorting, when we need to look at the optimality of sorting algorithms. Yeah, sorting algorithms optimality very, uh, very hard. That question, very hard. Yeah. Yeah, but we can use the same approach discover some common properties. Because nobody can exhaust all the sorting algorithms, right? Yeah. Nobody can. So most of the sorting algorithms unknown. Yeah. Unknown. But we can study those unknown algorithms. Yeah. Here I show you one example. Yeah. Alright. Next question. This one, remember we did, did one, uh, we solved this question in class. So we find optimal solution. So in class, the, the algorithm is optimal, but I just, I told you it's optimal. I did, I, I didn't prove it's optimal. No, because that proof is a relatively hard. No. So I can make a video, so as a, you know, I can post a video, explain why it's optimal, yeah. But for, for assignments, tests, you do not need to, you only need to know the result. You need to know that algorithm is optimal. You only need to know that result, yeah. 
So what is, what is the algorithm? Remember the tournament method. So we we pair we pair those elements, right? So here 14, 14 we we pair those 14 elements. X1, X2 do comparison. X3, X4 we do comparison, right? Yeah, seven pairs. 14. Sorry, yeah, yeah, not not a seven. Thirteen, right? The last pair, comparison. So the first round, we have seven pairs. So we compare, you know, each pair we do one comparison. So seven comparisons. Yeah, I just review that 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 algorithm. All right, then. Find the maximum, the winner's group. Okay. So this is the winner's group. Winner's group, we need a, we need a six more comparisons. Six more comparisons to get a, get a max. For the loser's group, this is a loser scope. We need a six more comparison for the minimum. That's the algorithm. Yeah. So we, in that algorithm, we we consider even function, right? Remember, in that n equals two k. Here I select k equals seven. So I use a concrete number here, okay? Yeah. So your answer is seven plus six plus six, 19, 19 here. Plus eight. Oh, you look at the title, uh, find both maximum and a minimum, okay? D point two, yeah. module one, D point two, all right? So go to, that's the module one, D point two. So you have the detail of that algorithm, okay? Number eight, in order to solve the element uniqueness problem for an array with n elements, is it possible to find an algorithm that can do better than the brute force? Yes, right? Yeah. The brute force method, remember, if we use asymptotic notation, that's big theta of n squared, right? That's the brute force. All right? Then, Remember, sorting first, yeah? Our method number two, we sort the array first. Yeah. Yeah. So we do not have a name for it, but uh, you know, you know, we, we do the sorting first. Then we do other JSON comparisons. After the sorting, then we only need to do other JSON comparisons. That algorithm, n log, n log n, n log n, all right, yeah, n log n better, better than, n squared, big theta of n squared, okay, yeah. so it's possible. So you need to familiar with. Yeah. So here you can see uh, the quiz questions only uh, designed to check your understanding of the basic knowledge pieces. If you are familiar with the content of the notes, okay? no hard questions, all basic questions. If you are familiar with the materials, 
because you need to have that basic knowledge. Then you can use the knowledge covering here to solve an advanced problems. Our homework assignment harder problems. If you are not familiar with these basic materials, then if you you may need to start from scratch, right? Some of the homework questions, if you are not familiar with these material, you, you start from scratch, then it could be very hard. Okay? Yeah. So that you can treat our quizzes, questions, pre preparing you for the homework questions, yeah, homework assignment questions. Yeah. All right. Growth function, yeah, this question, check your understanding of the growth functions. Yeah. For the selection sort, we know the sele selection sort, the number of comparisons is this, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you can drop the minor term. Yeah. That one half, I hope you do not select the C option. C option, why? Because for the growth function concept, we drop the leading coefficient. We replace the leading coefficient by one. Yeah. So D is correct. That's how we define the growth function. Because we want to make our growth functions as simple as possible. So we don't want to keep those coefficients that are not a one. So we, yeah. so we try to use the simplest possible growth function for each algorithm. Okay, yeah. So that's the, you know, number 10. Uh, can we apply derivative functions with discrete variable? No, right? Yeah. Remember, I did a few examples. You have to convert your functions with discrete variable version to continuous variable version before you can apply derivatives on your functions, a continuous variable. Okay, yeah. discrete variable usually we mean f of n function. Then the continuous variable f of x. Okay, yeah. so you do this conversion. Now you take derivative, Lobita's rule derivative. After you get your answer, then you apply the definition of limit, go back to the discrete variable version. Yeah, so we did at least two examples. At least two examples. Okay, yeah. Module two, part D, part C and part D. Part C, yeah, actually part C. Yeah. The end of part C. Yeah. We did several examples. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, so that's all these 10 questions. Yeah. The basic materials. Yeah. All right. Now let's move to move to the uh, module three part part B. Okay. Yeah. Now let me switch. Get out of this. All right. So I keep the annotation. Yeah. All right. But I lost the first slide annotation. Yeah, not too much. Yeah. All right. Then let me start. Let me check. 
My recording looks fine. All right. Yeah. So let's continue. Yeah. B point two. This topic. Yeah. So let's finish this topic today. Yeah. Variable size reduction. Divide and conquer. Yeah. All right. So let, let me move to. And remember, so last time we start uh, this problem number ten, greatest common divisor problem. Yeah. We haven't started. Yeah. We just uh, talk about the, you know, the questions. So let me start from very beginning. So we get a whole story. All right. Yeah. A question part. Given two non-negative integers, m greater or equal to zero, and n greater or equal to zero. Okay. No. But they cannot be both the zero. Okay. Each one. We only require, we allow each one to be zero, but we do not al allow them both zero. Why? Now the reason is simple. Yeah. Because if both M and N are zero, the greatest common divisor concept of these two numbers does not exist. Okay? So the reason is GCD. So this is a function, GCD function of zero comma zero does not exist. Does not exist. Okay, can you see that? Why it does not exist? Yeah. Let me explain a little bit. The GCD does not exist. <laughs> All right. Can you see zero is a multiple of any positive integer? Can you see that? Uh, yeah, let me give you this statement. <laughs> zero is a multiple integer multiple, all right? Zero is an integer multiple of any positive integer. Can you see that? One, two, three, four, and, and so on. Can you see that? Zero is a multiple of three. Can you see that? Because three times zero equals zero, right? Yeah. So zero or zero, <coughs> zero over, yeah, because when we say multiple, zero over any integer equals zero. It's an integer, right? We do division. Zero divided by any positive integer, it's zero. Zero is integer. If the quotient is integer, then zero is a multiple of n, right? Yeah. All right. So zero is a multiple of n. Then we say n is a divisor of zero. Can you, can you see? Do you agree with that? n is a divisor, yep, we, we put it as a denominator, n is a divisor of zero, how about that, okay, all right, now, common divisor, zero, zero, common divisor, is n a common divisor of zero, zero, yeah, yeah, each one, one is a common divisor of zero, zero, right, two is a common divisor of zero, zero, right, 3 is a common divisor, right? And 
but you can never find the greatest common divisor, right? Any positive integer is a common divisor of zero, zero, zero. But you cannot find the greatest common divisor. Does that mean exist? Because you can always find a larger divisor, right? There is no greatest number. You can always, yeah. If you, one million is a common divisor of zero, zero, right? But you can find a one million plus one. You can always find a larger common divisor than the current one. From that observation, GCD of zero, zero does not exist. No largest. You can never find the largest one. Yeah. yeah. So we should exclude, yeah, when we calculate GCD of two non-negative integers, we have to exclude the zero, zero case. So in your program, okay, when you write the program, you need to check first, if both parameters equal zero, if both equal zero, then you, you know, need to print out some error message. The greatest common divisor does not exist. Then you get out of the function, okay? Out of function evaluation. So you you need to yeah before you do the calculation, you need to check it. Okay? Yeah. All right. So so that's the first step. Yeah. Then now we assume they are not both zero, so we know the definition of GCD of M and N must exist so we can do the calculation. Yeah. All right. For the calculation, middle school procedure. Yeah. So in middle school, you did that. Okay. Yeah. Everyone yeah, knows how to do it using the middle school method. Yeah. So let me Recall the middle school computation method. Yeah, pretty simple. Yeah. Step one, find the prime factorization of n. Yeah. So you know prime factorization, right? Yeah. Prime number. Yeah. So first you need to know what is the prime number. Okay. Yeah. So here let me review. Yeah. Some of you may forget the definition of prime number. Yeah. Prime number, yeah. positive integers, yeah. those positive integers, they only have two different divisors, positive divisors, one and themselves, yeah, okay? So, two is prime, okay? One, two, only these two positive divisors. Three is a prime. One, three. Okay. Yeah. Four, four is not. Four other than one and four, two divisor. Third, third positive divisor. Okay. Four is not a prime. Okay. Five is a prime. Only one, five, two positive divisors. Six is not. Okay. One, six other than one, six. You have two. You have three. You have four divisors. Four positive. Divisors. So six is not a prime. Okay. Seven is a prime. Eight, nine, not. Ten, not. Eleven is a prime. Thirteen is a prime. Seventeen is a prime. Nineteen is a prime. And so on. Okay. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> step one, you need to do prime factorization. Write M as a product of a sequence of prime numbers. That's the prime factorization. Step one. Step two, find a prime factorization of n. All right, yeah. After that, now, you have all the prime factors in both numbers, yeah. prime factors. Now you can find all common prime factors between those two numbers. Step three. Okay. 
Then you take the product. Compute the product of all the common prime factors. You can find it. GCD, greatest common divisor. Yeah. Here, let me use a simple example. Yeah. All right. So this method, you can see the prime factorization is the key operation. Yeah. Key operation here. Op operation. Yeah. yeah, let me just yeah, write up. Okay, key operation. All right. Here, let me let me use a simple example here. Yeah. Let me, let's calculate GCD of sixty and uh, twenty-four using this simple method. First, we do prime factorization on sixty. Well, sixty equals two square. The first prime factor two, but it contains a power of two. Two square. So we should. Take the power of prime structure there. All right, yeah. Then the second prime three, only three. Yeah. So, we, we, three square is a not a not a factor, not a factor of sixty. Yeah. Then the third prime five, only five. Five square is not a factor of 60. Yeah. So this is the prime factorization of 60. Yeah. Very easy to get it. Similarly, for 24, we can get a prime factorization 2 cubed 8, 8 times 3. Yeah. So that's the prime factorization of 24. Then, from these two prime factorizations, let's find the common part. Power of two, the common part, two squared is the common factor of both numbers. Two squared, yeah. not two cubed, yeah. because two cubed is not a factor of 60. So we, need, we, only, we can only take two, two squared. Yeah. The three, three part, the common part, three. All right, yeah, so three here. Yeah. So the GCD, yeah, so I need to erase, okay? Yeah. Yeah. GCD is 12. GCD of 60 and 24, 12. Okay, yeah. That's the, from this example, you can see, yeah, let me just uh, turn off my cell phone. Mute. No. All right. Yeah. Do you feel easy or not? This method, middle school method, easy or not? Yeah. All right. Yeah. If this is a good one, if this method is perfect, then we do not need to look at other methods. But this method has a big problem. Big problem. So in the real world applications, this method is not useful. Not useful. How? Yeah. The problem is at the prime factorization. Do you know how hard is prime factorization? How hard? Where m and n is very large. Think about that. So the prime factorization where m, m and n are huge. Think about that case. How huge? Yeah, let me give you an idea. Thousand digits. Each M and N number, thousand digits. How big? Think about how fast you can do. You can you can use computer. You can use computer software okay, to do prime factorization 
on 1,000 digit. Yeah, here, let me just use 1,000 digit number. Okay. Yeah. Do factorize it. Yeah. Yeah. Let me here think about. Do the prime factorization on a 1,000 digit integer. Think about how hard it is. How hard it is. So you can use any computer you can access. Okay? Even supercomputer. Okay? The fastest computer in the world. If you have a chance to access. It is possible, but takes a lot of Yes, right. Takes several months. Let, let me give you an idea. Several months. Several months. That hard. Okay? Yeah. All right? In that level, that's slow. That's slow. It will do prime factorization. Yeah. Because you need to do large number of divisions. You need to try, okay? How do you know it's a prime? So you need to do a lot of div division. Too many divisions, right? Yeah. Huge number of divisions. You know, division relatively slow. How slow is the division? Here, let me give you an idea. Integer division. How slow is an integer division? Okay, all right. You get an idea. So let remember in our polynomial represent a uh, polynomial evaluation part B of module one. We look at the addition and the multiplication, right? Addition. When we look at the addition, we uh, we assume each addition takes one unit of time, right? One unit of time in CPU. That unit time for different machine can be large, small, you know, yeah. There is no fixed number. Some computer may be one nanosecond. Some computer may be two nanoseconds, okay, in that level. Yeah. A small number of nanoseconds. One addition, all right. Then, Multiplication. Ten units. Ten units. Okay. Ten to one ratio. Then one integer division. Let me give you an idea. How slow is integer division? Forty units. In CPU, 40 units, okay? Yeah. 40 times of addition, one addition, that's slow, okay? But if you need to do division, you know, try to factorize 1,000 digit, huge number, how many possible divisions you, you need to do? You need to try all the possible integer divisions, okay? Think about that. So that's extremely slow. Yeah. So the prime factorization is so slow, if, if you calculate GCD, your method relies on prime factorization, then you cannot do it efficiently. Okay? So you have to find a method that does not rely on prime factorization. So here we need to learn yeah, a very 
old, ancient. This is ancient method. Okay. Yeah. More than 2,000 years, years old. More than 2,000 years old ancient method. GCD. Without rely on prime factorization. Okay. All right. Let me show you the idea. Yeah. Go. Reduce the problem size. Recursion. Okay. Reduce the problem size. Yeah. How to reduce? Here we need to use a mathematical tool to reduce. Yeah. So what's the mathematical tool? Division algorithm. Integer division. You're familiar with integer division, right? Everybody knows how to do integer division. But we write integer division in a standard formula. So we call it in division algorithm. So what's that? Give them positive integers A and B. B cannot be zero because B is we use as a divisor. Divisor cannot be zero, right? So B cannot be zero because D is the divisor. No. There exists unique integer Q and R. Q for quotient, R for remainder. Okay. Yeah. So when we do integer division, we have quotient and we have remainder. A remainder. Yeah, not remainder. Remainder. Right? Remainder. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So then the remainder could be zero, right? Remainder is zero. Yeah. So you, yeah. special case. Yeah. But uh, could be other cases. Yeah. One, two, three, up to B, but remainder must be strictly less than B, div divisor B. Yeah. Remainder must be strictly less than b yeah such that a equals b times q plus r so this is the division algorithm okay in number theory yeah this basic result is very important you think it's sim simple so simple Everybody knows it. So simple. But in number theory, this result is so important. Okay? Yeah. Here, we need to use this result to develop a different GCD computation algorithm that does not rely on prime factorization. Then it will be very fast. Even you apply it on uh, 2,000 digit integers, extremely fast. Yeah. You can see the answer quickly. Yeah. Because the number of divisions you need to do, it's a small number. You don't need to do too many di integer divisions. Relatively small number of divisions integer divisions. Then your computer can do it very fast. So let's see yeah, that algorithm. All right, yeah. The main idea, problem reduction, problem size reduction, based on this division algorithm. Okay, all right, yeah. So here, we apply on the two given number, M and N, yeah. here, you know, for convenience, we can assume m greater or equal to n. Otherwise, we swap, okay? If n greater or equal to n, then we swap those two numbers. So we make the first number greater or equal to the second number. Okay? Yeah. Then, we can apply integer division. So m equals n times q plus remainder r. Then, the problem size reduction property. Yeah, problem size, yeah, here. The size here, we use m as the problem size. The magnitude. Here we use magnitude of the maximum of... So what's the problem size here? Problem size here. The maximum of... M and N problem size. 
Now we do reduction of this problem size. Okay, yeah. So here we use this transformation formula. Yeah. In order to calculate GCD of M and N, yeah, we replace M by that division algorithm formula. This is formula comes from the division algorithm. Okay. NQ plus R. But the NQ part, NQ part is an integer multiple of that N. Integer multiple of that N. Now, if we use this fraction form, fraction form, M over M, then we have the quotient part, Q. Integer quotient part is singled out. Okay? We can Take it out. Integer part Q, yeah. And the integer part has no impact on the fractional part, right? No impact. The Q part. No, yeah, because the integer. Okay. It does not change anything about the common factor of R, R and N. So here, now, the conclusion is the common factor of M and N is the same as the common factor of R and N. Okay? Common factor. Yep, because the integer part never changes the common factor of that remainder part, right? Yeah. All right. So that observation tells us GCD of M and N equals the GCD of N and R. This time we do proper size reduction, right? N, N smaller or equal to M, and R even smaller, right? Yeah. So these two numbers as a whole smaller than original two number, two given numbers, right? Then you can do reduction another round. Keep doing reduction like this. Sooner or later, you get the end of the reduction. When you reach the end, you get the answer, GCD. The end is, N is an integer multiple of R. N is an integer multiple of R. Then, you get a common factor immediately. You get the greatest common factor immediately. So you do not need to do further reduction. Okay? So how would you do the, with the, the previous example? 16 and 24. Yeah, 16 and 24. 6, 24, you take the integer, all right, 60, you take 2 times 24 out plus 12, right? Integer multiple, you throw away. Re remainder, remainder is 12, right? Yeah. But, but 12 and 24, 24 is an integer multiple of 12, right? So GCD is that 12. The, the, the smaller number. So you, you get quickly. Okay, yeah, so did I do that? Yeah, yeah, did I do that? Keep yeah, reducing problem size. Did I do that? Yeah, so we call it Euclidean algorithm. Yeah, let me look at the time. Yeah, I have, I have some. Yeah, so, yeah, so the Dion, yeah, let me just write here GCD 60, comma 24. Do you agree it is equal GCD of 24 and 12 because 60 equals 2 times 24 plus 12. Okay? All right? Yeah, so if we use the fraction way, 60 over 24 equals 2 plus 12 over 24. 
this integer part two does not change the common factor, right? Does not change the common factor. So the common factor between 60 and 24, the same as the common factor between 12 and 24. All right? Yeah. But because 24 is the integer multiple of 12, the so GCD is 12, right? The largest, largest common factor is 12. Because it cannot be greater than 12, right? Yeah. The largest possible GCD of two numbers is the smallest, smaller number of the two. Here, that's the case. Yeah. GCD of two numbers. All right, man. Before we finish today's class, we have five minutes. Let me write the reduction rule. Yeah. Reduction rule, Euclidean algorithm. Okay, more than two thousand years history, famous algorithm, Euclid. GCD of x and y, two variables. We do re recursion like this. Recursion. Yeah. If y equals zero, yeah, but we need to make sure they are not both zero. Okay. And, sorry, yeah. not, first we need to check, not both zero, okay? Not both zero means x equals zero and y equals zero, okay? Not both zero, yeah. Then we apply this GCD size reduction. If y equals zero, then GCD XY equals X. Okay? Yeah. Easy? Yeah. All right. Yeah, so we'll make sure yeah, Y X here, X not is zero. Yeah. Because we here we assume X greater or equal to Y. Okay? Yeah. Otherwise we swap the two numbers. Alright. Then if Y is not zero. But if x is integer multiple of y, yeah, because remainder is zero. Percentage, this modular operator, right? Percent sign, yeah. We use as you know, module, module, mod, mod operator. Okay? X model y equals zero, that means x is an integer multiple of y, then y is the GCD. Okay? Yeah. So that's the second case. Otherwise, then x model y this is a remainder remainder when we do integer division y as the divisor then we swap okay because y is larger than its remainder right so we put the y first then it's remainder then we do one reduction that next round we do we apply the recursion rule here another you know keep applying this reduction rule eventually yeah after several rounds we reach the end okay yeah reach the end yeah but the number of reductions not too many okay so you can reduce very fast, not too many, okay? That number much smaller than your integer division numbers you do for prime factorization. Prime factorization, the reason you need to do too many prime factorizations, you, do, you need to try all the possible divisors. Here, the divisors always given, right? You, because the divisor, you always know your divisors, right? You don't need to guess the divisor, right? Yeah. That prime factorization, you need to exhaust all the possible divisors. That's the reason. You need to do too many integer divisions. Here, by reduction, we always know specific integer divisor. We don't need to guess, okay? So that's the reason 
we can do very fast this method. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So we finished this topic. Then, if you write a code, find a GCD, you use Euclidean algorithm. Okay. You do not use middle school prime factorization based algorithm. Okay. Yeah. The difference is huge. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's it. So we finish uh, our review session number two today. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thursday we will do review on homework questions. Yeah. So I will do grading before Thursday, I may not be able to complete all the grading, two classes, right? Yeah, more than 40 students. I may not be able to come, but if I can do grading on half, I know what are the common problems, so I can explain on Thursday, okay? Based on about half of the students, I can talk about common problems yeah. on Thursday. All right, yeah. So you have a grace period today. Yeah. For some students who need a, a little more time, grace period today, yeah. And for exceptional case, yeah, some students can request one more day if you really need more time, okay? Yeah. All right, that's it.